Good evening and welcome to the third in our women's speaker series brought to you by Shoppers Love You program. Um, I'm delighted uh, to be welcoming an, yet another incredible speaker to our series tonight. Again, this is an interactive opportunity for you to hear our speaker, um, but also ask some questions. So we're really uh, pleased that the series is going as well as it is. Uh, this is the second year that we're, we're having these and we very much thank um, uh, Shoppers Drug Mart for, um, for giving us um, the, this platform to be able to share the stories of many women uh, across our province with others and that hopefully this will be helpful to, to many of us. Um, before we begin, um, I want to say that Mood Disorders Association of Management Offices are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge, of course, the harms and the mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and in collaboration. I also want to, um, you know, uh, say that uh, as a as an organization, as a community, as a country, um, we are all grieving, uh, but we're also healing uh, with the findings that uh, uh, the discoveries that were made uh, in the spring. I think it's important for us to remember um, those things and and how those have impacted uh, not just the indigenous community but all of us as Canadians. Um, tonight is again another very special night. Thank you very much, Susan Seropoulos, for um, uh, joining us. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, introduce uh, Susan in a couple of minutes, but I want to just tell you a little bit about um, uh, mood disorders. Uh, if you're new to our, um, uh, our speaker series, uh, we are um, uh, a grassroots organization, a community organization that um, provides peer support for anyone that is dealing with mental health issues. Uh, we're part of a, an entire support system that people need in collaboration with your healthcare professionals, with your families, with your employers. Um, and what we do is able to provide uh, peer support by those who have perhaps lived and shared, uh, lived or shared experience very similar to yours. We hope that you will be, uh, find more information about us on our website um, and reach out to us if you or a member of your, your family or close uh, person, somebody close to you, uh, a, a colleague, uh, a neighbor, uh, anyone in your community that you think might need help, please do reach out to us. You can find more about us on our website, of course, um, and, uh, and do call us. Uh, if you want more information. Um, I want to say that tonight, uh, again, uh, the, the topics that uh, uh, shared in these uh, the speaker series are very personal stories. Um, and they are, of course, the stories of the incredible women of Manitoba uh, who are brave and, and incredibly generous uh, with, the, with their words and with their uh, their uh, sharing of information and, and, the, and, and the successes and the challenges that, that they've had to be able to share that with others and hopefully help others as well. Um, they are, of course, their own stories. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, we uh, are, are very pleased that we are able to provide a platform uh, through our uh, speaker series for people to be able to share their stories. Um, also in these, uh, these sessions, one of the things that can happen uh, is uh, uh, because some of these, these stories are very powerful, lots of uh, 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 challenges that people have experienced, they can uh, be triggers for those who are, are listening tonight. And so if you are feeling that uh, something gets triggered, then please uh, do reach out to us. Uh, Dana, who will be uh, moderating our question and answer at the end of the, the session, and we'll be putting up um, information uh, do, do the chat. Uh, but please uh, uh, don't feel like you're alone and you have to deal with anything by yourself. Reach out to us and we'll be there to, to, to help you. So now on with the main show of tonight. Um, I want to welcome Susan Spurall. Susan, I made a mistake. Spurallus. Did I get that right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, I apologize for that. Um, Susan's mission statement uh, is that serving others with honesty and integrity while still honoring God and myself. What a powerful statement, Susan. 
Susan is a facilitator with Mood Disorders of Manitoba in the Westman region. And she works with an incredible team of some really beautiful people, as she describes them, that aspire to be their very best and help others at the same time. Susan has also created a, pro, a, a, a group called Soul Sisters, um, a, a peer support group to connect with women that want to connect in rich conversation and to grow in personal and into personal development and beyond. Uh, I can tell you that this is an incredible group personally because I have sometimes have attended and participated in a couple of those sessions. And Susan, you know, you and I uh, have planned about doing a sari party in, in uh, Westmont. So one of these days I'm going to come out there with some uh, saris and bindis and we're going to, uh, you know, get all dressed up and, and we're going to have fun in one of those groups. So I look forward to that. Um, Susan also has a very um, uh, inspiring um, um, professional background. Uh, she has been in the service industry uh, her entire life and has owned her own electrolysis business. She's managed a million dollar restaurant franchise. She sold uh, retail and party plan jewelry, worked in radio sales, and was the sponsorship coordinator for the provincial exhibition of Manitoba then, marketing, then an, a marketing executive and with online shopping club. With her sales background, um, and she's earned a lot of trips, uh, certainly to uh, places that you and I would love to go to, Atlanta and Disney, uh, uh, just to name a few. Um, and she has a perfect record on customer service with mystery shopping in her retail uh, arena. Susan and her husband, Paul, own Oliver's Bistro Catering for the past 13 years until, well, until COVID hit the, all of us and, and life changed for many of us. And she also manages and runs Spiropolis uh, Rentals in Brandon, Manitoba. On a personal level, um, uh, you know, uh, she was born in rural Manitoba. She has strong roots in rural, rural Manitoba. Uh, and uh, her parents were farmed in Basswood where she was raised. Susan is an identical twin. She is married and has four stepchildren and four grandchildren. Susan loves people, business, and is normally quite social. Well, until COVID when we all had to social distance, but I prefer to say physical distance. I hope people didn't actually social distance, but, but uh, uh, we ended up having to, uh, to uh, get into these little bubbles and isolate ourselves a bit. She says that she's managing better than she thought she would. And on a cold night like this and uh, uh, Manitoba winters, what could be better than spending the evening with Susan who is going to be making her own sunshine? Please join me in welcoming Susan to our series. Welcome, Susan. Well, thank you, Rita. It's a privilege uh, to be here and to share my story with you and um, my peers at Mood Disorders uh, Westman and into Manitoba and Winnipeg. Uh, I'll start with a couple of powerful words, divorce, home invasion, verbal abuse, addiction, abandonment, abduction, suicide ideations, bullying, and a fire. That is my life. And tonight I will share my journey as best I can and try not to trigger anyone. I'm making my own sunshine because as you can see, there were a few storms, but usually there's a rainbow at the end of the storm. So, I'll start you, I'm an identical twin and born in rural Manitoba. My mom was a teacher and uh, we started kindergarten and we were together until grade three. Uh, when I was in grade three, the teachers found us like two identical. So they decided that they would move each one of us into separate classes. And when we did that, um, I don't know about you, but um, being a twin when you've been with somebody since conception, 
to have that be broken was uh, the first step of uh, a shift in, in my head. Then tragedy hit and uh, I was in the class that we didn't finish our readers. So a number of us were held back. So people would say to me, which one are you, the smart one or the dumb one? And that absolutely crushed me. I know that there was something that happened at that point in time. And the suicidal ideations um, sitting in the bathtub, when I was told I wasn't going ahead and I was gonna be like left behind, um, I wanted to die. And that's pretty, pretty severe for that, that young. But uh, I faced the music and was placed in uh, the grade three area, but was such a mental and emotional mess that they moved me to the grade four area. At that point, I did grade three work for the grade four year. And then the next year I was in officially grade four in the grade four room. And it, the, the bullying and the snarky remarks were, you know, you fail grade four when really I was doing grade four work. Anyway, at that point in time, um, I felt like I couldn't trust anybody. I felt um, extremely alone and extremely isolated. And uh, it was like the beginning of, I have to buckle down and I have to work really, really hard to be able to uh, graduate grade 12. So I worked very, very, very hard um, throughout the rest of the years in junior high. And uh, when I got into grade nine, uh, I had a, an English teacher that was extremely strict. Uh, she knew her stuff. Uh, she taught us um, university level English uh, when I was taking an uh, 103. Uh, it was very difficult, but uh, uh, on kind of graduation from grade nine to grade 10, uh, I actually got awards uh, both in ecology and um, English for merit. And, and what I was blown away with is because like, I thought I was stupid. Um, but they also gave the award for um, attitude and merit for uh, work ethic. And that absolutely warmed my heart. Uh, in grade uh, 11 to grade 12, I had uh, an opportunity to live in Clear Lake and work at a phenomenal restaurant up there. And uh, when uh, my parents had their 25th anniversary, my uh, dad has uh, been diagnosed for over 45 years with bipolar. Um, at the time, we didn't know my mom was OCD, but um, we had their 25th anniversary and it was an absolute nightmare. Uh, there was a comment made uh, to and about the service at uh, the restaurant that we were at. And uh, it, it went from bad to ugly. The police were involved uh, or called, sorry. And uh, I took my mom out of the situation and, and we went and we stayed uh, in Minnedosa for the night. And uh, I never got any sleep, but I, I went to work the next day in Clear Lake. And uh, my parents patched up that fight, but that was very, very, very difficult on me. Uh, I, I just, I felt that everything lands on my shoulders. Then I graduated and I moved to Brandon and I worked at a Greek restaurant. And uh, five months into that uh, career, I was um, leaving a party and I walked down to where the restaurant was because I had left my car there and 
not thinking, coming from the country, never really worried about, you know, other people. And I was uh, abducted. Um, I was, I was tried to, tried to be, I guess, beat up. Uh, he tried to get me into his, the cab of his truck and, uh, he roughed me up before we got to the cab of the truck, but like, thank God I hung on to the, the, the actual back of the, the cab, like the box of the truck. And, uh, he tried to pull me off, tried to pull me off. And I, I got to the end and, and I got away. But uh, I was like beyond devastated and um, my mental health took a major hit after that. Uh, uh, we found out that he had been charged three times uh, with rape and um, I think I would have been the fourth because he was only convicted of one rape, but he probably did three and I would have been the fourth. So my mental health went down the toilet, but I didn't have any support really. I felt that because I wasn't um, raped sexually, um, that I should be fine. And I clearly was not fine and I was not fine for absolute years. And so when I tell my story, I, I want people to know that um, if you're having a hard time, then don't stay silent. Don't suffer, you don't have to suffer. Uh, reach out and, and get help and thank God for mood disorders. I'll you know, give them their major credit uh, later on down the line. Um, but after I regrouped, uh, I continued working at the Greek restaurant and I uh, met my first husband. And uh, I ended up uh, buying an electrolysis business. Uh, I had a lot of uh, unwanted hair, which also wrecked my self-esteem. And uh, I had been getting a lot of treatments done and the lady was retiring. So I bought her business uh, when I was 23. And I worked uh, in that arena for uh, eight and a half years. And I loved my clients. However, I fell downstairs and I like incredible pain uh, in my tailbone. And for two years after I, I was injured, I was able to sell my business and, uh, you know, kind of like regroup yet again. So I was hired on uh, to a franchise to work uh, as a, as a, as a manager of a restaurant and I had no experience except for my customer service from my service industry in the past and my business uh, so I jumped in and I did the best I could uh, what I didn't realize at the time when you get interviewed for a job you should be interviewing the establishment and what I did not realize was the the job that I had taken on uh, was the fellow that trained me actually got fired because they were replacing me with it in his job, but his wife was the manager in the kitchen. And uh, like I could probably write a full book on bullying and uh, the stress that I was under working in that establishment was absolutely incredible. And in the, I started in December and in February we had a house fire. By this time I was married, uh, we had a house fire. And uh, we also then uh, in that following summer were going through a separation and then divorce. And um, you know, everybody that has ever been through a separation divorce, uh, that isn't for sissies either. And uh, it, was, it was very traumatic. That was not my choice, uh, but there was abuse, verbal abuse. And um, there was uh, looking like there could be child abuse uh, involved uh, with regards to um, violence. And I did not know how to um, navigate through that without somebody getting hurt. 
So the only thing I could do was leave. And uh, that's what I did. So uh, going on and working uh, after the Smitty's restaurant, I, I got a job in retail jewelry and uh, I absolutely loved that job. And uh, worked there for a number of years and also worked at the keg where uh, it was amazing. The, the actual folks that work at the keg are a, a beautiful bunch of people. I kind of joked and said uh, I was, you know, 10 years too old. I think I was 33 at the time. And, and if I had been 23, I would have had an absolute hoot, but I was kind of past the, the crazy stuff. But anyways, uh, loved that job, but uh, had an opportunity to uh, work for the local radio station. And uh, I was hired on there and uh, I love business. I, 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 that business to me is incredible. Uh, people are, that are entrepreneurial are just a, a great group and uh, like they know and they have tenacity and grit and uh, to be able to uh, go out and see a, a numerous businesses and see how they're, they're doing and help them uh, market was, was like a really great job. Uh, however, I had uh, a boss that uh, was female and she was, uh, I don't, I really, I really don't know other than an effective manager. She micromanaged and she said um, the most inappropriate things to me. And there was a very big difference between uh, males, how they were treated in the office and females. And I look back and I, it was, I was so embarrassed. Uh, tr uh, tr people from Toronto came out to train us and uh, I had not been very familiar with the websites. And I ended up uh, having to ask questions about the websites and, and the fellow from Toronto was training us. And I said, well, I only really know how to get to the radio marketing bureau. And uh, she pipes up and said, uh, well, your favorite sites are the porn sites. And I was devastated. And, and I mean, I, I'm very professional. And to have somebody say that to me, I was crushed. And then we had uh, all gone out for drinks and uh, meeting the bosses of the bosses in Winnipeg. And I was having a conversation because I had been raising stepkids till I was divorced. And uh, I was speaking with one of the bosses in Winnipeg. And he was indicating that his daughter was like, you know, 14 going on 21. And I had said, yeah, I totally get that. I totally understand. And um, she pipes up and said, how would you know you're still a virgin? I, again, was crushed. So not knowing that I had no hope because uh, one of our past bosses phoned Winnipeg uh, to ask them, uh, what can we do about this? And they said they had nobody to replace her. So I had to um, look for another job. So I went and uh, got a job as a sponsorship coordinator at the provincial exhibition. And it was, um, you know, brilliant uh, business, a uh, rural uh, agriculture. I had uh, a good balance coming from the farm and I was able to flourish in that job until uh, there was a staff change, uh, another staff change, and another staff change, and all of a sudden, uh, the girls in the office had a lot to say about how I spent my time, uh, why did I get to go to the chamber lunches, why did I get to uh, do the things that I was doing, and uh, made my life like a living hell, and you know, at this day and age, all I can say is, is that life is way too short to be doing something that does not um, give you the values and support, um, you know, your, your criteria of joy and happiness and service. So I uh, had then met my second husband and he had a restaurant and uh, wanted me to go work like with him. And I had decided that I was not wanting to go back to, you know, a restaurant life, but uh, he decided to sell his business and uh, we decided to create uh, Oliver's Bistro Catering. 
And so when uh, we did that, I was able to uh, quit at the Provincial X and uh, focus on our catering. And, um, you know, it was a dream job uh, to be able to do large weddings, uh, large events, uh, just it, it made my heart sing. And we put our sights on a home here in Brandon that was uh, owned by the university. We had done many caterings for them, uh, for the president of the university, and we were able to purchase that home uh, and uh, start to do caterings in the house because of the character that it had and the charm that uh, people could experience when they were having uh, dinner parties or weddings. Uh, we've even done funerals uh, until COVID. So each and every time uh, having to regroup and start a new climb of a mountain in a career, it has been extremely difficult. However, the grit that I found when I was in grade three has carried me through to this point. In the summertime prior to COVID, uh, like a few years prior to COVID, uh, I had gone through a very, very bad um, situation. And we had had a number of uh, deaths in a year. And uh, we had a uh, family member shot in Las Vegas at that concert. And I was coming unglued. I, I didn't know what to do. And I looked into the phone book and I found uh, the number for mood disorders. I'd never heard of mood disorders before. And I phoned and the most lovely lady, um, Marion Goldstone answered the phone and we met. And for three hours, I think it was three hours we spoke and I, like unloaded my story and she was gracious she listened she helped me understand that i wasn't alone and that uh she would help and we met um several times and then i was able to get into a wellness uh program for that winter and it was absolutely like life-changing. Uh, I had never in my life taken any time for myself. Um, I, was, I was taught from my mom um, never to be selfish, uh, to always like look after others uh, before myself. And I never, I never, I didn't know what really self-care was. So learned how to do some painting, uh, learned how to uh, do some, I want to say commercial writing, but it's not commercial writing. It's um, just, just general writing. Uh, I had never done anything like that before, and it was absolutely amazing. So I started to shift in regards to uh, not focusing so much on, you know, career. It was pulling back and, and starting to find out who Susan was underneath all of these hats. So once I started uh, working uh, with the committee to start the second year of the wellness, uh, I was elated to be asked to be part of that committee and I uh, was able to take a facilitator course so that I was able to help uh, with um, co-facilitating with Marion and Brent, and that was absolutely amazing. So since then, uh, we've created, um, as we said in the bio, uh, a, a group called Soul Sisters, which is uh, peer support for people that are looking to grow, feel supported, not be alone. We call it coffee, confidentiality, and 
conversation. We meet and we talk about how people's week went and then we discuss um, a book uh, like Bernie Brown or uh, different authors and we have like a rich conversation and I absolutely look forward to it. It has been a lifeline since uh, COVID has, has happened. In fact, we started the month before COVID and uh, it's now coming up to the two years. The, the ladies that are in our group are the most amazing ladies on the planet. And I am so excited to be part of uh, the umbrella of mood disorders. And uh, I honestly do not know where I would be today if I had not picked up that phone and called Marion and really had an opportunity to unload my trials and tribulations and have her be able to guide me. And so now I am able to guide others. And uh, I think that's what my passion in life is and my true uh, service is all of the tribulations that I've been through in my past and all of the hurts and all of the storms is the fact that all of it's worthwhile if I can help somebody else shorten the distance that they're, that they're in the ditch. That's what I call it. And um, there are days still that I have uh, issues. Um, I have my dad living here with me now since uh, last April and 24 seven care uh, in regards to uh, daily life. And my mom has been now diagnosed with pre Alzheimer's. So um, life is a journey. And each time I visited the ditch with my grade three experience, um, my attack, the verbal abuse, all of those kinds of things, um, like my addiction has been uh, with working. Uh, it is very, very difficult for me to relax and like pick up a book or um, even just to give myself permission to listen to some music because I had such a drive to achieve and now I feel uh, in, a, in a place where I can enjoy life, but give back in a lot of different areas. And there's folks that I've, I've um, met and we've had them uh, join uh, our group uh, with regards to authors of other women that have had other experiences with trauma. And uh, again, they're writing books and they're helping others and so um, the platform that I run, it, it works very, very well to be able to invite them on and help them uh, with their journey, as well as uh, we help the girls in the group on our journey. So as we uh, move forward and think about where we're at in regards to uh, personal development, at the end of the day, uh, I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I deserved to dream, never mind to have a dream. And it's so interesting to me that I've just put my head down and I've worked and I've worked and I've worked. And getting to be able to sit in front of you today and be able to share my story if it can help anyone uh, with their trials and tribulations that they have. Maybe we have different um, degrees or uh, like different situations, but uh, when each of us are transparent, uh, each of us are vulnerable, and uh, we realize that the shame uh, for having gone through um, a brutal attack and uh, being devastated and alone in a lot of different areas with the job changes, et cetera, 
is that I've chosen to make my own sunshine when the clouds are really black and it looks like you can't get through it because it's so bad. I've just kept searching for that rainbow because at the end of a big storm, usually it's calm and usually there is a rainbow. And I think the pot of gold is knowing that this too shall pass. And as we go through the things in our lives that are really gut-wrenching, we know that there's other people that have gone through it. But as we share with uh, our, our peers and it gives other people permission to share their stories that they've probably, you know, stuffed down and uh, it can come out in anger. It can come out in addiction. It can come out with overeating and alcoholism and drugs. It's if, if you feel that you are in such a bad situation that you're having suicidal ideations or you can't manage and you're coming unglued, uh, pick up the phone in the chat. Uh, I've asked uh, the folks at Mood Disorders to put in uh, the phone numbers for each um, different uh, support group that can help anybody change um, the trajectory of their life. Um, my questions to each of you listening is, are you where you want to be? If you are, fantastic. I hope you're helping people around you. If you are not where you want to be and you feel that you have mental health issues, you have addictions or stress, and you just can't seem to move forward because you're stuck, reach out and get some help. Because if you're able to, um, there's people that will help. If you see somebody and you maybe judge them because they do live in a beautiful home or they, they look like they have it all together, um, you can be sadly mistaken, number one. And number two is go and talk to them and, and say, I admire you and I want what you have. What do I need to do? to get there. And you might be really surprised that person would be open to help you. And uh, my goal in life is to serve others with honesty and integrity while still honoring myself and God. So with that, I would like to uh, turn it back over to Rita. And if there's any questions at all, um, I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share my story and uh, look forward to uh, meeting you if you need uh, and wish to reach out. Thank you so very much, Rita. Oh my goodness, thank you, Susan. Um, that was just uh, quite overwhelming to hear that. Um, you've just gone through so much and uh, you know, I. Uh, I, I do believe in it, Brenda Brown, uh, what she says that vulnerability is the other side of courage. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having the courage uh, to share your story with others so that others can, can be there. Thank you also for being there for others um, uh, as you have been uh, through a number of your initiatives, including Soul Sisters, which I have attended on a couple of occasions. Um, uh, there are, I believe, uh, Dana is going to be um, uh, monitoring, uh, moderating our question and answer, and, and I'm not sure how many questions have come up uh, uh, in, in the in the chat, but maybe we'll start with uh, something that uh, just to get the conversation going. Um, Susan, you started to, at the beginning talking about uh, when you were in grade three uh, and about your twin sister. Um, maybe I'll just ask a very simple question. What's it like to be a twin? Well, I wish I wish it was amazing, 
to be honest. Uh, I believe that um, because I repeated grade three and my sister went on, there has been a disconnect uh, with us ever since. And, and I'm sad for that because uh, there, there's twins out there that just are so much alike and, you know, talk all the time and are, um, you know, so, so very happy to spend time together. And, and uh, our, our relationship, uh, we're working on it, uh, but it is, is uh, been, it's been very difficult. And I wish, uh, and I pray someday that we can be as close as other twins uh, are. Uh, but I, I don't know any other way. Uh, all I know is what I, uh, the hand that I was dealt. And uh, I just wish someday that uh, we could have uh, just a very harmonious and beautiful relationship. Thank you. Uh, Dana, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Dana is our moderator for the question and answer. So I'm not sure, Dana, what, if there's questions that are coming through in the live chat. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple. I also just want to say thank you, Susan, for sharing your story as a young woman. I, I think it's always nice to hear from other women who share their stories, too. And I'm also trying to navigate through my life, so I'm definitely not there yet. But it's really nice to hear from someone who has a lot of lived experience in that area. So, you know, I always regard anybody who I come across to as like an older sister or a mom. Well, that's how I refer to everybody <laughs> dearly. Um, so I have a question. Uh, it's coming from Juanita. Uh, Juanita's question is, how has your self-worth changed since finding mood disorders? Well, that's a, uh, it's really interesting uh, question. I feel that uh, in all of the work that I've done and uh, the different arenas that I've been in, um, I don't honestly feel uh, that I have felt the true value of me as a person uh, since I got involved with mood disorders. So what I mean by that is, is the appreciation, um, the acknowledgement, um, the actual, what you bring to the table is cherished uh, and appreciated by the people that are at that table and also uh, the management of mood disorders. Uh, the actual uh, being offered to be a facilitator, uh, to be asked about uh, how I feel about things and how things can be done better, uh, I really, really appreciate it because I, I would always want to help if I could. And uh, I just think that sometimes, you know, we give and give and give and, and people, not that you give and serve to be acknowledged, but it is, it is really heartwarming and heartfelt to have the appreciation that uh, the Well Westman for sure uh, is where I work. Uh, and, and just to be able to be able to recognize and and walk um, together with others that have also grown really warms my heart too so uh, anybody that comes through the doors when we could meet is wanting support like i did and i want them to know that uh, nobody's going to judge them uh, they're going to be supported they're not going to be by themselves and that we're going to do life together and just knowing that I have that, I don't, I guess, cushion or support, whatever that would be. It, it's, it's like, you can do anything if you have at least one or two people behind you saying, you know, good for you. You did a great job. I, I love, I, I won't miss soul sisters for the world, you know, those kinds of things. So definitely uh, the confidence of the support of all the people that attend, uh, the participants, as well as the uh, co-facilitators and the facilitators. Thank you for that question, Susan. And thank you for, you know, supporting mood disorders and everything that, you know, offer. Um, I also, I think this is kind of like, 
it seems like a question, but um, also like a comment. Um, Stephanie, who's been commenting, saying how it's been really tough for a lot of pregnant women um, who are maybe diagnosed with a mental illness to find resources. So I'm guessing that she just wants to kind of, I, I'm guessing that this is a question because um, she's been sort of um, posting in our chat. Um, and I guess I'll put that as a question to you. So um, I guess the way that I'll, I'll frame it is if you know any resources uh, for Stephanie in particular, um, for any pregnant women who are diagnosed with a mental illness, um, if anything. Well, certainly uh, there is a uh, postpartum uh, group support. Uh, there's a lot of different resources. Uh, I would definitely have her call into the Westman office. And uh, I personally think, um, you know, I, I don't think I'll be out of line, but uh, the pregnancy piece is, is kind of not even relevant. It's if, if there's an issue, um, female, uh, join uh, Soul Sisters or come to the Monday night uh, group peer support. Uh, but but reach out and get some support. Obviously, if there's other women that have gone through uh, pregnancy, um, it could be like the baby blues, uh, you know, that hormone, uh, you know, could certainly be an issue. But, um, you know, maybe, maybe the mental health issue was there before we really don't know. Uh, but uh, definitely reach out. And um, I'm on Facebook. So um, Susan Spiropoulos on Facebook, if you want message me and we can certainly talk and we can certainly include you and, and look up resources for you. Uh, not a problem at all, Stephanie. Thanks for that. Um, I guess she also had ans um, had another question maybe because she missed a portion of your talk, but she wanted to ask um, if you had a diagnosis of a mental health um, well, disorder. Well, I don't know if that's too like personal to ask. Oh, you. No, I know you probably <laughs> no, I'm, per I'm pretty open. Actually, uh, interesting she should ask that. Uh, when I was uh, isolated for a long period of time many, many years ago, uh, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, clinical depression, but it was situational. So uh, that was, you know, a portion of time, but I've always felt that I have an underlying depression. And what happens is, is that uh, when I was very, very young and going through all the stressors that I was going through, I just felt all of my life that my eyes were like just ready to cry all of the time. And uh, it was very, very difficult. Uh, so I do have uh, a little, uh, it's effector that I take uh, with regards to, you know, doctor prescribed, but um, I've always kept extremely busy. Uh, any kind of idle time for me is uh, a disaster. I feel that um, I wasn't able to process uh, the the stress that I had for all of the traumas that I've had, but with mood disorders, I've managed to start to uh, break down the, the stigma in my head. Uh, the actual being able to, uh, you know, have the talk therapy within the peer support where I am with people that are non-judgmental and that are very caring and loving and uh, are really there to hear, um, you know, when I am hurting or if something's happened, uh, that I can share. So um, clinic depression, probably about 10 years ago, but I, I do wonder if I do uh, have a bipolar uh, tendency as well, but not been diagnosed per se. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Um, there's definitely a lot of love in the chat. Um, Stephanie really appreciates your answers. Um, I also just wanted to read out some comments as well. If, um, while maybe some people might send us last minute questions. Uh, Marion, Marion uh, wanted to comment saying, Susan, you're so loved and appreciated by all. Thank you for all you do. You are an inspiration to us all. So thank you, Marion. Love ya. <laughs> and then Juanita replied um, saying, Susan, you are an incredible, strong, capable woman, and I'm so thankful you welcomed me with open arms at my first meeting. <laughs> so I remember. Yeah. yeah, she's adorable. And she's come <laughs> such a long way. And now she's even facilitating, um, you know, different groups. So it's, it's amazing people, uh, when they when they're in a 
an area where they can blossom and bloom. It is so beautiful to watch uh, that they have a chance to be who they truly are supposed to be. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. I love this. Um, I guess I'm just kind of making sure that I don't miss any questions. Maybe I'll ask a question too, sure. if uh, anybody wants to throw in last minute questions before we close off. But my question would be to you, Susan, is this might be a big question. <laughs> Maybe you might not have the answer for this, but I guess what would be like your biggest takeaway in your life experience that we, you would like to pass on um, to anybody who may be listening or maybe in the future, maybe future Susans, you know, for example, or future Juanitas or future Stephanies, you know, um, anybody that is coming through. And uh, yeah, what would you like to impart with your uh, wisdom? I think the biggest takeaway would be don't try to do it by yourself. It is okay to ask for help. It does not make you weak. It, it Suffering is a choice. And I suffered for so many years because I didn't know where to go. And now I know that there are organizations and, and nonprofits such as Mood Disorders that uh, can really find you and help get you the resources that you need so that you can be uh, thriving and not just surviving. So. That said, also that, um, shoot, what was the other thing? I, I guess I, I would just say is don't, don't isolate yourself. And with COVID, I know it's been so very difficult for people, but get on a Zoom, uh, watch a podcast, learn um, self-care, um, I, I never, and I was going to say is, is something that I just learned very, very recently is putting essential oils on your temples and, um, down your carotid arteries here, and then down your jaw will actually stimulate your vagus nerve. And a lot of times people that have, um, like the mental health issues, the anxieties and those kinds of things, um, like their guts are all in a knot and it's probably got a lot to do with their microbiome and uh, do not hesitate to reach out because there's so much, so much that we don't even know, but I've just started to really dive into um, like the health and wellness piece of our gut health and uh, the essential oils and those kinds of things. Um, there's so many tools that we can use. We do not have to suffer and don't sit in the ditch and suffer is reach out and ask for help and don't stop until you get it. Okay, great. Uh, Dana, are there any more questions that have come through? I, I, Cause I have a question. Yeah, I think that is, <laughs> Steffi said kombucha. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to throw that <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> um, but if not, I will give you the floor, Rita, and I believe that would probably be the end of our questions. So okay. um, you have the last word. Okay, um, Susan, thank you again so much. Uh, and you, you've given some really great advice to uh, to our listeners and, and those who will watch this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, live cast a little bit later. Um, you talked about, um, you use the term addiction and addiction to work. Um, and so I sometimes find myself um, that that is something that I end up doing, ad getting addicted to my work as a coping mechanism um, to, to manage some of the stresses uh, in my uh, in my. Well, in my life, uh, whether it's personal, professional, whatever the case might be, um, do you have some advice for someone like me um, and others who might find themselves in a similar situation where they are addicted to work? And well, how do you manage that? How do you manage that? Well, it's it's funny um, with with all the hats that I've worn, uh, we still have I still wear quite a few hats even during COVID. Uh, but uh, I, I'm learning to schedule time to have uh, some downtime. And uh, I do really do enjoy reading. And I, I've, I, I have a whole library in my office uh, with 
self-help books that I've, I like I read often in the evening, uh, but definitely is finding uh, a balance in uh, uh, it, it's a, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's a circle and there's a little dot kind of in the middle and then you, the little lines go out like from one till 10. And it's like, where do you see yourself in um, personal care? So maybe it's like a seven and then where do you see yourself in work and you're like a 10 and where do you see yourself in, in um, exercise three, where do you see? And then, and then you, you know, like you kind of circle the dots and then you actually know where you're at today. And then you can start working on just small uh, changes in the areas that you need to do those uh, changes in. Uh, you don't want to take on and try to do, oh, I want to go to the gym and I want to do yoga and I want to do this, 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 mm -hmm. and this, because then, you know, you flip to the other side, but definitely uh, cutting out some time for what you do really enjoy as a passion. And I've been very blessed in my life that uh, uh, like, I, I can't say there was any job that I've ever hated. Like I, I, I find it very sad when people hate what they do for work because it's a long, long life. Um, I found the things that I've done in my life I've enjoyed. And so therefore it wasn't like work to me. And uh, the, the fact that uh, when, when you do things that like when you go on holidays, like I always think to myself, oh my gosh, I love to go swimming. I love to just relax and read a book. Da, da, da. You know what? Have a little holiday today. What would you do on holidays? Do it today. Throw on, turn up your heat, put on your bathing suit and pretend you're at the beach. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Susan. That's some great advice. Um, um, you know, that uh, uh, we often just find ourselves that by, by working constantly and, and just keeping you know, like a gerbil, you know, just keep the, keep the turning and turning that those, some of those stresses will, will leave. But in fact, what happens is those stresses get increased and, 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 you, and you don't engage in self-care. Um, I've actually had to learn that. That is something I have had to learn. Um, uh, last year, when I was going through a, a challenging time uh, with a, a, you know, some a losses in my life, uh, I had to schedule things. I had to find time to to be. Uh, and it took it took um, it took disciplining, uh, and I had to be I had to do it and uh, uh, be thinking about it. Like, so, one of the things I did, I, I call it mindless is I watched Hallmark movies. I just, you know, um, I- Did you have your tissues? <laughs> yes, I have lots of them. I did I did that, I used to watch Hallmark movies. I think I've watched every Hallmark movie that there is. Um, I've okay, some of them probably here in Winnipeg. Um, but nevertheless, I think that advice is great. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I uh, will certainly talk to you more about it. Um, uh, we do share that with with uh, in, uh, in our peer support groups as well. Um, you also talked about uh, having that support system in place um, uh, and having a great job. You talked about uh, the importance of being in a place where uh, you enjoy your work. Uh, I can't tell you uh, how much uh, I feel blessed and privileged uh, to be um, at Moods right now at, at this stage in my life. Um, I, I do believe very much in the universe. I believe I'm meant to be, I'm, I'm here because I was meant to be. Um, uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, just, just before COVID or just at the time of COVID, I went through a, a very difficult situation and I thought I would just never survive. I felt like I was gonna be sucked into this tunnel. Um, and, and, I, and I landed um, at Moods and um, I feel my life has blossomed again. I have an incredible team uh, that I work with across the province, uh, incredible folk that run our programs, people like great young women like Dana uh, and working with Marion and so many others and like yourself as well. So I feel very, very blessed, feel very privileged. Um, and I just wanna end on that note and say, thank you for sharing uh, your story. Thank you for, um, uh, for, for having the courage uh, to, to uh, 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 share some of the coping uh, mechanisms that you did. And, and uh, I, I hope that at the end, uh, people will have taken some, some of that away and, and be able to uh, heal themselves. Um, I also want to say thank you to uh, uh, all of our viewers tonight. Um, 
who uh, took time to be with us. Um, and uh, if you have, um, uh, if you want more information, or if you need help, please do reach out to us. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, and I also want to say thank you to uh, uh, Shoppers Drug Mart for providing us uh, this platform and, and uh, the opportunity to have the speaker series where um, incredible, ordinary, ex yet extraordinary women from all across Manitoba are going to be sharing their stories throughout the year. So thank you very much. It's eight o'clock. Uh, have a lovely evening, everyone. And good night. Thank you, Dana and Pam for minding the shop. Good night, Susan. Night. Take care. Mm -hmm.